Greetings and salutations, my dear audience. This is Joe St. Egg Benedictus just coming tonight with a long-term Bible review of the New Spirit-Filled Life Bible, edited by Jack Hayford. Uh, just want to, before I go any further, give a quick shout-out to my pal Mike and to all the visionaries and mystics out there. Thank you for joining me. As I mentioned, this is a long-term review of a Bible that I use devotionally. Because I use it devotionally, I kind of walk you through how I use it, why I use it, and what I like about it, and some of the things that I found to be uh, going on after uh, its long-term use. <clears throat> we originally purchased these Bibles, my wife and I, in 2013. In order for us to do devotions together, we purchased it with these uh, cool, uh, very well-fitting Bible covers, which are actually quite inexpensive from christianbook.com, I believe, has the nice embossed fish there. Comes with this particular cover, comes with a nice pocket where I keep my Pilot G20.07 pen, which I use primarily to journal. Uh, so the pocket's big enough to hold uh, a journal, like a moleskin style traditional journal. Also, keeping here a uh, <clears throat> cool uh, ruler, because I do like to use a ruler when I underline. I am that nerdy. It also has books in the Bible, because I got it from a Bible store. And a couple of index cards here, because you never know when an outline of a sermon is going to hit, and you need to write down quickly <clears throat> thoughts, ideas, or an outline of a sermon. So let's jump into it. As I mentioned, I bought this Bible in 2013, so it is nearly, I, I can't believe it, seven years old. I feel like I just bought it just yesterday, but that is not the case. Uh, as we open it up here, uh, I have my Micron 0 0.05 pen, which does not bleed through this Bible. I also have a Zebra Bible highlighter, which has a fine tip and the highlighter at the end. <clears throat> so as we take this out, I'll kind of show you the way of this Bible as the embossing of the Holy the dove represented the Holy Spirit on here. It is bonded leather and new living translation. It's from Thomas Nelson. So you can see the new spirit filled life Bible. <clears throat> there are the numbers. Uh, I guess that would be the particular numbers you need for this particular edition if you so choose to get it. It has the silver edging which is maintained its luster over the years, but keeping it in a Bible cover really does help retain that luster. It has one ribbon, black. I don't use this to preach, so I don't really need more than one ribbon. I use it devotionally, so it just bookmarks where I am in my devotions. It hasn't really frayed, and I've gotten it caught up in the zipper a time or two, and it still has held out pretty, pretty well. So I'd say that's not a bad ribbon, but one of these days I'll have to change it out for a better ribbon. As we open it up, you can see there's a vinyl paste down liner, um, an introduction page. Let's see here, I show my information. Uh, there you go. And then the page here, you can see it's kind of creasing from use. Uh, and as you get into it, because of the nature uh, and the age, it being nearly seven years old, you can see it's coming apart. It is a glued binding. It is not a sewn binding. In fact, you can actually, if you look close, you can see the glue right there. The glue. So uh, it is coming apart a bit. If you go to the back here, you can see how it's coming apart in the seams in the back. So it's a little discouraging because I really do love this Bible and uh, I've gotten a lot of good use out of it. The uh, new Spirit Filled Life Bible comes in not only New Living Translation, but also the New King James Version, and I would guess the King James Version. I haven't really looked into it. And it might come in the NIV, so I'm not sure you'd have to shop for it, but um, because I read this devotionally, primarily uh, the New Living Translation is my translation of choice for just reading the Bible without um, getting technical. You know, for a preacher, it's hard to read the Bible without always thinking about what you're going to preach. And the New Living Translation allows me to switch to a more devotional mindset in which I'm receiving the word rather than trying to figure out how to preach the word. Those are two very different things. And for ministers, it's important to receive and to be nourished as much as it is to think intentionally how to nourish others. Uh, this is based off of the original 
Spirit-Filled Life Bible by Jack Hayford. Like the old original Spirit-Filled Life Bible, you'll see it has, each book has an introduction, including the author and date, the background information and content purpose, as well as Christ Revealed and the Holy Spirit at work. There's also some personal application. And also like the original Spirit-Filled Life Bible, you have the outline, maps, as, were, as well as different insets, uh, including study notes, okay, your references in the middle, kingdom dynamics, which is, uh, can be a thought or an insight or a dev a devotional in nature, as well as word wealth uh, insets. The word wealth are few and far between, so I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to find any off of the top. There's a word wealth right there. It goes into the word. It gives you the, the number in the Strong's um, dictionary, the meaning, and application. So it's a really good and fun study Bible. I find this to be very gr a great study Bible. It is Pentecostal in tradition, but I don't find that to be, you know, I'm, I'm Baptist, but I don't find that to be a too much of a you know, a hindrance or any issues. I come from a charismatic background, so this really gets me back to my roots of coming from a, a charismatic upbringing. Not only do I use it devotionally and have found um, just great use for it devotionally, um, as you can see, I, I write with my um, Micron pen, and there is no bleed through. Like, even when I hold it up, you can't see it, you can't see it through. So um, the Micron pens really work well on this study Bible. It is not line matched, but again, you can't tell. Uh, but it also has given me inspiration for sermons. I, I do shut off my brain for thinking about sermons when I read this Bible. And I have a separate Bible, uh, Oxford NRSV, for my sermon prep. But at times, sometimes these notes are so good that they give me ideas for sermons. And... Um, and it's, it's very inspiring. Each book at the end has a truth and action section where it gives lessons from the book and, a, and applica personal applications, which I find very helpful. But for instance, to give you an example, if we go to Haggai, let's see here, Haggai. Uh, I was reading the introduction to the book in Haggai and stumbled upon uh, what it was arguing that Haggai is a, a book of encouragement in order to confront three things that can stifle uh, the growth of God's people. One is disinterest, second is the issue of discouragement, and third is the issue of dissatisfaction, and how this book addresses all three. They're all Ds, disinterest, discouragement, dissatisfaction. I thought, boy, that's helpful. I wrote it down, used it next week in a Bible study, and found it to be very helpful Gave credit to to the to the Bible, didn't claim it as my own, but things like that pop up throughout the various ways this Bible not only speaks to me devotionally, but also uh, informationally as as it as it forms me, but also informationally. And uh, it's a great Bible for meditation, for prayer, for contemplation, and ultimately uh, for the Holy Spirit to. Uh, move me into a place of illumination. Illumination. So uh, that is kind of uh, the, the use of the Bible. As I mentioned earlier, it being kept in a Bible cover has maintained, retained this silver edging. Not too fond that it doesn't have like a, um, a color when you kind of crease the pages there. And also, as I already showed you, it is falling apart. So my thing is, you know, if this Bible ever really falls apart, I'm probably going to get another one because I really do love it as a devotional Bible. Um, <clears throat> I'm currently still in the Old Testament on my 10-year Bible reading plan. I did a video where I said, you know, you can do a one-year Bible reading plan, but, but really, I mean, how much fun is that when you can do it? What can, why, why do something in one year that you can do in 10 years? So... You can check out the link below for that video if you're interested, but that is the long-term view, at least seven years old, of this New Spirit-Filled Life Bible uh, that um, just really comes in handy. As I mentioned, I bought one, and my wife also purchased one. We purchased it at the same time, kind of as an anniversary gift, 
in order to to read the Bible together. And her Bible is is just as well used, and uh, she has a pink cover, so it's just a great Bible and all around fun. Uh, if I was going to uh, to church and and being a person in the pew, I probably wouldn't take this to church per se. I'd probably use something else like um, my um, my NRSV or uh, my my pocket sized NRSV uh, or or Revised Standard Version. But again, for devotionally, this is a fantastic translation, a great Bible, wonderful notes, very informative and extremely inspiring. So with that, I hope you have a wonderful day. Read your Bible now. You have a little bit more time in your hands if you're safer in place. Get some reading done. Make a goal. Read it. Check out my 10-year Bible reading plan and go for the gold.